Will AI destroy the software engineering field? People in your position, staff engineers, principals, do you think they, in their experience, are feeling the same way about using AI to code? Yeah, I think, generally speaking, almost everybody that I talk to is of the same opinion. Hey, I'm Rory, and I'm here in Los Angeles to speak to people across the tech industry and to find out what is going on with tech in 2025, what is going on with AI, is it hype, is it the real deal? We're going to find out. Do you use AI at work? I do occasionally. I've tried it out. It's not my favorite in its current form. I use it for things like helping me write unit tests and mm. helping me find opportunities for making my code a little bit better. But I don't use it for writing code in the first place, usually. Why is that? It writes code. When you put in the prompt, you say, hey, I want this code to do this thing. And maybe it gets you the code that does that thing. But the code is so bad. It's mm. a term that we use for bad code in general, which is just spaghetti code. <laughs> it's like a wet noodle. And that's generally what I find I get out of that. Maybe I'm using the prompt wrong, but... It creates more problems for you to more, fix. Unless everything is being done with AI, which it... Is not good. It's not good enough to do complex tasks at all. So unless everything is AI, no human ever needs to go and touch that code. Not for me. <laughs> and to your knowledge, other people in your position, staff, engineers, principals, do you think they, in their experience, are feeling the same way about using AI to code? The, the code specifically, I would think so. A lot of people that I talk to, I can't say for everyone, I'm sure there are some people out there that are like, this is the future, you just type in the thing you want and it writes the code for you. But yeah, I think generally speaking, almost everybody that I talk to is of the same opinion. It's good for some things, it's not good for just do this job for me. Will AI destroy the software engineering field? No, <laughs> I hope not. I think that it's not going to replace software engineers anytime soon all the reasons I've mentioned before, but also I don't see it getting to a place where it can understand human interaction well enough to replace the human element that comes with coding. Now, I think it can change the shape of software engineering, but that's true about most things and maybe has always been true about software engineering. New libraries come in, new frameworks, new coding languages come about and to me that's where AI comes in is it's another evolution of software engineering. There's a lot of non-technical people who I think have a misconception about the tech layoffs that we're hearing about and the rise of AI coding tools thinking that perhaps the rise of AI is what's leading to layoffs. What do you wish what one piece of information do you wish non-technical people understood about AI? It's not replacing people certainly not in its current form and i don't really see it replacing humans anytime soon at least not in software engineering right no. there's yeah the, the you basically said it right the the layoffs and the recession was not about ai jobs taking over if anything i've not heard of a i mean i'm one person and i do, but i don't know anybody that's been replaced by ai or mm -hmm. even laid off because the company thinks, oh, we're going to replace you with AI. People are using AI. It's a tool, not a yeah. replacement. What type of engineers is AI replacing? Not bad ones? I don't know. How do software engineers stand out in a brutal tech market? It's a great question. Don't know that I have all of the answers, but I think for me, highlight your abilities that aren't just the technical ones. Mm. I, I came from a psychology background and I like to talk in my interviews about how I worked with kids who had disabilities when I was in college. That was so helpful for me as an engineer because it helped me see that people learn differently and people learn in a lot of different ways. That's true in just communicating in general. I like to talk about that in interviews and in technical interviews because it helps frame how I talk to other people about technical things, about non-technical things, and that's a huge value add. What is the ideal person to enter the tech industry? What qualities do they have? What attitudes do they have? I think anybody who's excited or interested in it should try it. You don't have to be any specific way to try something out. And maybe by just trying it out, you can kind of find those attributes. What makes good engineers are people who are curious, people who are excited about learning, people who constantly want to grow and evolve and 
learn new things and always try. So just flipping that for a moment then, there's a lot of people who are desperate to get into tech, but who do you feel perhaps isn't the ideal person to go into tech? <laughs> Two answers come to mind. One is if you're doing it because you're like, this is the easy payday. Mm. Let's do it. It's not the easy payday. It's a not bad payday, but it's not easy. It's hard if you're not excited about learning, growing, evolving, and not just once, but over and over and over again, then it's probably not for you. <laughs> you mentioned earlier that after your psychology degree and you knew you wanted to pivot into tech, you didn't necessarily want to go down the route of doing another four-year degree. What route did you take? Maybe you could talk a bit about that. Yeah, I took a boot camp route. And I think it's what a lot of people do. And it's a great thing. I have oh, zero regrets. <laughs> Not that four-year degrees are bad by any means. It's a different type of learning, though. Boot camps are also really intense in the same way that universities are really intense. I just feel like I got so much value out of it. I learned how to be an engineer, not just the theory of engineering. And that's so valuable um, and has been so valuable in my career. So you've obviously worked with probably dozens and dozens of different engineers. Have you worked with both types, the four-year CS degrees and, and the boot campers? And do you notice any kind of obvious differences in their capabilities, their capacities, the way they approach problem solving? I have worked with all kinds of engineers for sure. Um, and I think there are definitely differences. Um, I won't say good and bad because none of it's bad. I've worked with a lot of really good engineers. I think for me, the main distinctions are a lot of times folks coming from traditional CS backgrounds really have a heavy focus on the very technical details. How optimized is this code for running in very specific situations? And not that bootcamp grads don't do that, right? It's, it's heavily focused on that. I think bootcamp grads generally tend towards asking more questions, understanding a little bit more. They care a little bit more like the business use cases or is at least want to understand how is somebody going to use this? They're asking more questions. They're a little bit more probing. I don't think that there's anything really inherently wrong with those different yeah. approaches. You know, you need a balance of both types of people in, in companies. Me personally and my personal learning style, it was much better for me to go that boot camp route and get that type of experience and value add versus the very deep theoretical technical understanding that you get from uh, maybe a CS degree. Mm -hmm.